Hi, I'm Jill McBride Baxter, and I've been a sports law attorney for 30 years, and a coach's kid, and a coach's wife. I get up every day to protect people, be an advocate, and their trusted advisor. Let's get after it. All right, Jill, what can you tell me about the excise tax? Yeah, currently for contracts or for employees at major universities and nonprofits, if you're making over a million dollars, the amounts over a million dollars are um, the IRS is imposing a 21% excise tax on, for instance, the university or the nonprofit. Okay. Okay. So, and it's really your five top employees that are making over a million dollars. Well, in in college athletics, um, that it's, includes a coach. <laughs> it's usually the men's basketball coach, the men's football coach, the athletics director. Um, those are usually the three. Um, and so what's happened is, and this this excise tax this year is the first year that it's being imposed on Okay, so this is a new... This is a new phenomenon. tax law. Mm-hmm. Got it. And so if you are renegotiating a deal, I think we all have to be cognizant of the excise tax for these amounts over a million dollars. So you have to come up with some creative ways to, in fact, um, uh, create, wh- how, what do you do to handle this? Well, what I have figured out, number one, is there's a thing called split dollar policy, okay. where, in fact, um, the employer loans the employee a certain amount of money, and the employee owns the actual split dollar life policy. Um, they put the money in the uh, split dollar life policy, over like let's say and you and you have to do it over usually a 10-year period a certain amount of money and it's a loan right so it's not income and then the beauty of it is the employee okay has a retirement benefit and a collateral cash value that's a certain amount okay um, when they choose to retire but the employer is actually the beneficiary and they get repaid all the money they put in upon the employee's death. The remainder of the money that's built up goes to the um, employee's beneficiaries. So that's one way, like let's say you, let's say the market value for somebody is $2 million and this person's only making a million, let's say, and they've done a good job and, and the market is, and they're really, you know, they're gonna get a raise. So that's one way of structuring the deal. The other is um, deferred compensation under a 415M plan, which is um, a plan that the university actually has to have in place, and the, the employer, the employer was will own it. The employer then would put the amount of money in, and I think it can't be over, I think three hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, and you need to check your tax laws to make sure, um, and you could defer that money. And then you just have to make sure in the contract, and this is where it's really important that you have an attorney that understands this stuff, because if the contract's not written properly, the employer and the employee could get taxed. Got so it. you have to make sure that the wording's correctly. There has to be a set date when this money is going to be dispersed. When it becomes a problem is if somebody were to be terminated without cause, and if you don't have the date in there for when this would be dispersed, and since you don't know when somebody might be terminated without cause, it could... Um, raise some huge issues when you when you end a relationship so you really have to say that it's going to be paid on this date and this amount um, if in fact you have a termination situation Uh, a third concept that is also a possibility is just um, maybe loaning money for their mortgage okay paying off a mortgage Uh, another thing that's happened with some people is They've done actually separate deals with companies like Nike, so they're getting the compensation from Nike, as opposed to um, the actual the uni- employer. Yeah, yeah the employer. Um, another is to have stock options, maybe in somebody's business. That's a, you know, maybe somebody who is a businessman in your area that would be willing to give like stock stocks to somebody if, in fact, they may like as kind of maybe a retention kind of thing. Um, another way is maybe to agree with. If somebody's 
maybe at the end of their careers to agree maybe to some consulting options later on. Okay, so you know, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of options. I think that a lot of people have not thought about it much, but I have um, been thinking about it a lot because of a contract I'm reno- re- renegotiating right now. And I think there's a lot of you know ways for universities and for employees to agree to things that will be mutual beneficial because they avoid the excise tax, but they also avoid the current tax on the money. Right. And they also avoid all the, you know social security workers comp all that other stuff that comes out of a check that's pretty expensive so i i see it being i think a lot of these ideas are great options um to put in in co- contracts and you know you just got to know you better know what you're doing though and you better make sure you make got the the uh words correct thanks for watching my video if you're a coach or athletics director please call me or go to my website to get my coach's consulting package and fee structure. You can also subscribe to my podcast called Representation Without Taxation.